guys and welcome to episode 10 of The Only Way Is Up and it's a season review episode today so we're going to start with the real end of season awards and the fans player of the season award went to Ibu Toure with 73% of the vote obviously he is our best player, joint best player now I think with Robbie and Shaw so it's quite deserved that he's, he's won that award, Stephen Wright came in second, Luke Williams in third goal of the season was Robert Earnshaw for his stunning finish against Connors Key on the, the last game of the season, I'll actually show you that now Connors Key plays it through to Rushton. Scarisbrick tried to tackle him. It's Rushton. Scarisbrick wins the ball that time. Can he clear it? He does, and that's come to Earnshaw. Rob Earnshaw with the ball forward to Adam Orm now. Can he find Williams on the left? It's Hughes, who does find Williams on the left. Donegan. Plays it out wide right to Maher. Long ball forward towards Earnshaw. Earnshaw shoots. Oh, what a goal from Rob Earnshaw. Robert Earnshaw with his third goal of the season, and that's an absolutely fantastic goal. That's exactly the reason why he was signed for real. And the signing of the season was also Robert Earnshaw. Obviously, we got him on a free. And the young player of the season is Ibu Toure. He was the 21-year-old. He will have a bit of contract issues with at the moment, but I'll get into that in a little bit. So the team of the season looks like this. Got Islip in goal. Scarisbrick, right, Barnett and Toure in defence. You might notice Barnett's there. However, we, we didn't really play Barnett in any of our games since we've taken charge, really. I think he's come off the bench a few times. But obviously this takes into account the entire season. So the manager that was here before me must have must have played him a lot. Or the same with Mackin, who's in the midfield. Then we've got Mannix, Donegan and Williams. And then Orm and Air up front. In terms of the team stats, we've got top goal scorer for Real this season was Adam Orm with 15 goals. Highest average rating went to Ibu Toure with 7.39. Luke Williams got the most assists with 13 David Mannix with the best pass completion of 73%. Ibu Toure got the most play of the match awards with 7. Scar Scarisbrick got the most yellow cards and the most red cards. He only got one red card, 8 yellow cards. Now, taking a look at the season review, the Welsh Football Daily have said that Real will look back on the season as a job well done as they impressed sufficiently to break clear out of mid-table obscurity and announce themselves as a club on the rise, finishing above their expectations. Our expectations were, I believe, to get a, a top-half finish and I don't really think we... We managed that. I oh, know it was mid table, so we got we got it. We finished seventh, so we got the mid mid table finish that they they were after. Um, in terms of competitions, like I said, we finished seventh in the Welsh Premier League, lost in the semi final of the JD Welsh Cup to Connors Key, and lost in the final of the World Cup before we took charge to Port Talbot. Match of the season and the moment to forget, neither of which we were in charge for both. 3-0 scorelines, one a victory and one a, a defeat. Average attendance was 465, that's 15% of the stadium. So not the best, but hopefully we can improve on that with some better performances next season. Total number of players used, we're second in the Welsh Premier League for that with 32. It's quite a lot of players. Although, obviously, a manager change will affect who gets picked in the starting lineup, and I guess I must have picked a few players that the previous manager didn't want to play. Uh, we avoided the tax hit because we didn't make any taxable profit. Over the past years, I'll get into the finances in just a second as well. They don't read for well, they don't read for that bad reading, but they're not the best. Um, we've announced a new main kit sponsor, two-year deal estimated to be worth seventeen point five k per annum, which is a bit less than the previous deal, but not that much less. Not nothing to worry about. Initial budgets for next season. £5,000 wage budget and £0 transfer budget. That is because of our financial situation, which looks a little bit like this. So as you can see, £65,720 in the red at the moment. We have made a profit this month of £2,183. But I imagine when the players get paid their wages, that's going to go down. Yeah, we've, got, we've still got a week, a week and a bit left in May. So... That's going to go down. We're going to be in making a loss for this month as well. So it really would have been nice to have got some European football last season to, to come into this season, but wasn't to be. Just taking a look now at the final league table for the Welsh Premier League. And as you can see, Port Talbot won the league. They finished 11 points clear of the new Saints who were in second. Uh, I keep on wanting to call them the Total Network Solutions. I think that's what they, they used to be called. Um, so yeah, TNS finishing second. Qualifying for the Europa League, Port Talbot incidentally qualified for the Champions League, having won the the West Premier League. I think they qualified for the one of the early knockout rounds, maybe the first qualifying round, not knockout rounds, qualifying rounds. And then Aberystwyth qualified for the Europa League, also finishing third, but they had to play 
uh, European Places playoff, which I didn't even know existed. We actually were, got into that one. We played against Kondeski. That was the game where Robert Inshaw scored that amazing goal, in fact. Um, but we, we got beaten by Kondeski. But incidentally, I don't think Kondeski should have been in that competition, to be fair. Because I read up on the rules of the Welsh Premier League, and supposedly, because they won the the Welsh Cup, they would have qualif- They were already in the Europa League. So, really, the 8th place team, Bala, should have been included. Yeah, that's how it should have Yeah, the 8th place, t- place team, Bala, should have been included. We should have played against them in the, the quarter-final of the European Places playoff. But I don't, I don't know what happened. Very confusing, all these, these new leagues to me. But um, anyway, Connors Key, Aberystwyth with TNS, they all qualify for Europa League. And Newtown and Haverford, Haverford West got relegated. And we don't yet know who's been promoted to the Welsh Premier League, but it'll be interesting to see. So I thought we'd just have a look at where our former club VW Hammer finished, and it's not good. But <laughs> to be fair, the number of teams that get relegated in this league is ridiculous. Look at all that. So the only teams not to get relegated were Bournem, St Nicholas and Alst. And only Alst have a chance of getting to the, the second Belgian second league. The VW Hammer finished in 14th. How did they do? Got 10 wins, 6 draws, lost 18. Just have a look at the fixtures. Okay, so when did we get sacked? I think we got sacked after that game, didn't we? The 4 1 defeat to Le Louvier. And then they went on to win 4 more games in the season. But yeah, VW Hammer getting relegated there. So I just thought we'd take a quick look at our squad. See how everyone's getting on. So Jordan Islip, obviously our first choice goalkeeper. He's done all right this season, actually, since since he came in. Um, his composure's improved up to 11. It's very nice, obviously. His potential is possibly four and a half stars. He's currently on two stars. So with him playing first-team football for us, he will hopefully get close to his potential. Dean Keats now. You can see that his, his abilities have all decreased and he is actually retiring at the end of the season. I did try and persuade him not to retire, but I guess it's kind of a good thing in a way with with the way that his attributes are, are going down so quickly. Levi Mackin didn't really I haven't played him once. He's not good at all. He will will be leaving at the end of his contract, which is in the end of June. Ben Maher, this guy, this guy, he's gonna be something. Um I, I, he was, I think he was in the under-21s when I joined. The reserves, sorry, not the under-21s. He was in the reserves when I joined. And I just saw his potential ability and I thought, yeah, we don't have any other right-backs, so why not give him a go? And you can see he's, he's improving. He's improved in his strength and he's improved in his decisions. He's got the potential to be possibly a five-star player. And at 20 years old, if I continue to play him at right-back, he continues to get to develop, then he's, he's going to be one of our best players. And hopefully we'll manage to keep on to him. I have signed him to a new deal, a one-year extension. So he's with us until the end of next season now. He's only earning £50 a week as well. He didn't want much. Next up, David Mannix. Um, he has he is one of our starting centre midfielders. You can see by his... The, what the coach doesn't think that he's that good. He's a, he's a decent player. But he, he has put in some pretty good performances for us. You can see down the bottom there that he's played 18 games overall in the, the Welsh Premier League. He's got a 6.77 rating. In the Welsh Cup, he's got 7.1 rating out of four games. So he's he's not bad, not bad at all. And he'll probably remain in and around the first team squad next season, I imagine. Next up, Adam Orm. What, what can we say about this guy? Um, signed him up. He's signed for another season. 24-year-old striker. He has been in magnificent form this season. Getting 15 goals overall in 39 games. And if he can continue that in the next season, that then that, that'll just be brilliant stuff. Robert Salathiel, he's going to be leaving at the end of season two he is a, a player with a very high potential but he doesn't want to sign a new contract with us which is a bit of a pain um which is why i stopped playing stopped really putting him on in the the matches near the end of the season so i will try and sign and give these players that i'm talking about contracts again but i don't i don't think they're gonna want to remain at will unfortunately Steve Salathiel, this guy came in through my youth intake actually, and you can see that he's he's improving well in lots of different areas. Um, his potential ability is not very high according to the coach, but I think he could be he, he could be a solid centre back. I'm trying to nurture him 
Um, obviously, he got he got a bit of game time. He's made two starts in the, the Welsh Premier League. Um, I'm hoping that he's going to learn off, off from Stephen Wright because obviously he's a very experienced centre back, and it would be be amazing for Steve Salatiel to to become a starting centre back for us in the future. And then Carl Scarisbrick, he's been one of our starting centre backs too. Um, he's with us again next season. He's a very good player. He's pretty good average ratings in the league and the cup and not really got much to say about him apart from the fact that he's very good. Derek Taylor, centre midfielder again, could find his place in the on the subs bench under threat if we when we bring in a couple of new mid, centre midfielders next season. Ibu Toure also won't sign a new contract with us. He's our best player alongside Robbie and Shaw. So it's no surprise really that he wants to move on but I will keep on trying until until his deal is up I'll continue trying to offer him a new deal hopefully he'll take one but if he doesn't then we'll be getting a new left back in because we've only got one other player that can play at left back and that's Moses Barnett and I don't really rate him very highly Julian Williams I don't he hasn't played very much I don't think he made a start for us um I'm not too sure about him really Luke Williams obviously our starting attacking left midfielder played very well this season, lots of assists, 13 assists in 42 games overall, which is very good, very, very good for the position that he plays in. And thankfully he's here for next season too. So we've got our main source of assists and our main source of goals remaining for next season. Stephen Wright, the experienced centre-back, a 36-year-old, has strained his ankle ligaments. Um, there was a news item that came through when he did this actually that suggested that he may actually think of retiring because of the injury. I spoke to him and said I look forward to um I said that his place in the team will be safe when he comes back. And he was like, I just I'm looking forward to returning to full fitness. However you can see that his attributes are going downhill, which is to be expected for a thirty six year old. So maybe he won't get as many starts next season. He will still be starting, but I'm gonna try and ease one of the younger centre backs in. I might might even try and get a loan from a from a bigger team. Michael Askew, our second choice goalkeeper, he's not he's got pretty good potential also. Um, I think he's got higher potential than Jordan Islip, in fact, just by half a star. But our second choice goalkeeper at the moment. Um you can see he actually played ten times, that must have been with the previous manager. Got an average rating of six point four one, so that wasn't very good. So he'll probably remain as our second choice goalkeeper for next season. Moses Barnett, don't rate him at all. His contract's expired. And I think I'm just going to get rid, to be honest. Connor Bell, he's put in some good performances as well. Um, obviously, with the striker situation, we've got Adam Orm and we've got Robert Earnshaw. So Connor Bell's probably like third choice striker at the moment. But that's always nice for if Orm or Earnshaw gets a, an injury or anything like that. So Connor Bell will, will be staying with us. In fact, I need to offer him a contract because in the entire time that I've been here, he's been playing without a contract. Aaron Bowen, not the best, nothing compared to our two top strikers, not even close to Connor Bell, to be honest. Um, he'll, he'll be going at the end of the season as well. Expires His contract expires in June, so bye-bye to Aaron Bowen. Tom Donegan, another one of our better players, centre midfielder, doesn't want to sign a new contract, however, his contract expires in one month. Um, again, we'll try to sign him to a new deal, but whether he, he wants to talk about one is another story. But you can see he's he's been solid this season. He's played 38 times, scored six goals, seven assists, an average rating of 6.74. So it will be a shame to lose him, but he's obviously got his, his eyes set on bigger things. Let's move to a bigger club. And then comes the man himself, Robert Earnshaw. Look at that, he's improving in areas as well. 35 years old, improving in his technical areas, obviously decreasing in his, his physical, his pace, stamina, Agility all going down, his work rate going down too, but crossing, finishing, first touch, long shots, long throws, penalty taken, all going up. He's the best player at the club, hands down, five stars, according to my coach. Um, and he started scoring from the end of the season. He got three goals and eight, well, three goals and eight starts altogether, two assists. And I just, I can't wait for next season with Robert Earnshaw starting the season with us. I'm sure he's going to bang the goals in, provided he doesn't get horrifically injured another striker now jake air he's one of our younger ones 20 years old he's got great potential i i'm trying to use him a little bit 
obviously with Orman and Earnshaw starting and then Connor Bell being my backup, uh, may get a a run out if we've got a, a few runner games in a short space of time. But obviously with the lack of competitions that we really compete in, that's not very likely to happen. So you might get a run out in the World Cup. I think I'll, I'll do that, the Welsh League Cup. Robert Hughes, another guy that I think is going to be very good for us, centre midfielder. In fact, that might mean that I don't have to buy as many centre midfielders that I, as I thought I would. I think Robert Hughes could come in easily for Donegan, possibly. Yeah, well, Robert Hughes is a good player anyway, so he's. I'd like to actually start him. And if we lose Donegan, then Robert Hughes might come in and I might just try and get a, a young centre midfielder. You can see my coach thinks that he's going to be a three and a half star rated player, which is always nice. You can see he's also got a 6.5 rate and he's came on 13 times off the bench. We start, only started five games last season, so hopefully we can increase that next season. And then we're back to Jordan Islip. So overall, in terms of what we need to strengthen in the, the, in the summer break, we need to get, I'd like to get a backup right back. I'm not sure where I'd like to go with that though, because... Ben Maher is obviously young, a young, a youth prospect. Um, so I think I might like to get an experienced right back in just to maybe to tutor Ben and to have a bit of backup in the, that position. And in terms of the rest of the positions, left back, I want to get a new left back in because I don't think Moses Barnett is going to cut it if Ibu Toure decides to leave, which is highly likely. Uh, centre midfielders, I have said Robert Hughes could coming at the squad but I think we may still need although Derek Taylor has got potential he's got potential so I'll have to have a look at that I might need a centre midfielder as well so currently we're looking at right back left back centre midfielder and it'd be nice to get a backup that's a bit better than Julian Williams for Luke Williams it'll tack in left midfield then we've got Earnshaw Orm up front. Nothing to worry about with the striker situation so it'll be right back left back centre midfielder and possibly attacking left midfielder that we would be looking at for next season my aim for next season is to finish in the top half that's what i'm telling people but really i'd like to finish higher than that i'd like to finish in a european place um if not for anything else apart from our finances obviously anything better than seventh will be brilliant but that is it for this episode of the only ways up the season review episode the end of season one episode 10 and hopefully we can push on next season it's not wasn't the best start to the to the series with getting sacked by vw hammer um oh it was always going to be tough in the belgium third division to be quite honest with so many teams that get relegated you've only got you've got a small a small chance that you're going to finish in the top top three or top four that don't get relegated um but i think real is a great place to come i think we can make some great strides at Real and hopefully we can we can get them pushed up the table next season. But like I said, that is it for this episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel to get all my content when it comes out. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.